Excellent. Well, we got some uh, news you can use, as usual, to start off with. And I'm calling out tonight, right off the get-go, Zillow. Bunch of, this is like liar, liar, pants on fire type thing. Uh, there was an article that just came out in Fortune magazine. And uh, Zillow has doubled down on their bad bets. If you remember, we talked last week about Zillow having to write off $880 million last year from their uh, I buyer debacle where they said that, you know, the computer ate my homework type deal, that their artificial intelligence computer system overpaid and overbought a whole bunch of houses, like thousands, tens of thousands of houses, evidently. Um, and it, it, what it did, it had the effect of artificially increasing prices of homes across the way because they were overpaying for homes they didn't need. And that brought overall market conditions up. So they have not written off all. I have predicted probably six months ago they'd lose a billion dollars. They initially said it was going to be a hundred million, then three hundred, and then four hundred, and now eight hundred and eighty. But I think it's going to be well north of a billion. But they're doubling down on their bet. What they're doing now is they're saying that the market is going to be the hottest it's ever been, including last year, better than last year, for the first six months of this year. Um, they're calling for increases of 20, almost 22% in the price of houses in a six month period. That, to me, that's just self-serving mumbo jumbo. They're just trying to fan up the prices to reduce their losses. And they have the bully pulpit because they have everybody's ear in the mainstream media. Now, even the mainstream media is starting to look with uh, a jaundiced eye towards everything that Zillow says. Specifically, uh, even uh, the government agencies, the GSEs, Fannie, Freddie, they're calling for a 3% increase in prices for the entire year. Uh, CoreLogic is calling for something more moderate in the single digit figures as well. Um, but there's an interesting one that just came out too, and we're gonna put a chart up here. I'm gonna show you what Case Schiller is showing. Now, Case Schiller uh, is the group that has correctly predicted everything uh, up to now, they predicted the recession or what we call the Great Recession in the housing deal back in 2008. And they've hit all of the troughs and peaks up to now. Uh, and here is what they are calling for. They are calling for an increase as well for the first six months of this year, but nothing nearly as much as uh, what Zillow is. But the bottom line is when you start looking at month five uh, here on the top, you're going to see these prices start dropping and, and fairly dramatically going into January of next year. I would tend to buy these numbers more than anybody else's numbers. When it's all said and done, you take the difference between January this year and January next year, and it's a, a loss of probably 13, let's say 12, to, I'm sorry, between 15 and 20%. It's going to be something like a 16% drop in prices. So, Zillow on the one hand, 22% increase. The GSE is basically at par. In other words, it's not going not gonna to go up or down much. And then Case Schiller is showing maybe a 15% drop in prices this year. So, um, I, you know, on these kind of deals, my metric is always, you know, follow the money or the old Latin term, uh, qui bono, que bono, who benefits? from this. Well, Zillow obviously benefits because if they can fan the market prices up, it creates a reduction, a dramatic reduction in their loss and some of the stuff maybe they even have already written down uh, price-wise that they overpaid for uh, could recover and they may gain some of that stuff back. So I would throw that out. Uh, Case Schiller, they don't have a dog in the fight. They just report the numbers based on their predictions. I tend to believe those. Uh, those guys, they've been accurate all along. Um, and so I think that's the numbers we're realistically going to see. Now, are we going to have a, a spike up in some areas of the country between now and, you know, summer, early summer? Uh, yes, because there's still a housing shortage. And until the economy dampens, um, you know, and the, the full effects of what we're seeing on the horizon uh, come in to play, you won't see that reflected in the housing market, at, at least across the broad fronts. Uh, as soon as some of that stuff starts playing out, and it could be as early as tomorrow morning, you know, if Russia fully invades Ukraine and we we go to war with Russia, 
Uh, if that happens, you know, all bets are off. Prices start dropping. Nobody buys. Everybody wants to sell. They're all rushing to the exits and nobody's buying the stuff. So, you know, one news cycle event can turn this thing around. But with in the absence of that one news cycle event, um, which I think is more likely to happen than not, because we haven't had a big news cycle event since COVID. So we're on we're due for another one. Um, it, without that, though, you know, I think we're still looking at a market that's going to be less uh, at Christmas than it is today. Prices will be down from where they are today. Now, certain areas of the country, as we always talk, will be up. And that's where there's more demand because people typically want to move. And, and where do they move from and where do they move to? They typically will move out of higher priced areas and move into lower priced areas. They'll typically move from blue states to red states. So for example, a big mass migration out of California uh, of people who don't want to live in blue California and they want to live in red Tennessee and red Utah and red Iowa and red Florida and red Texas. And you'll, you'll see a lot more of that. People are taking, they're voting with their feet. They're taking their money and moving elsewhere. So that uh, will affect those markets. Uh, that'll make those markets go up. Uh, other markets like California has already flattened out and prices are going down in some of these um, non-land impact areas. So um, it's, it's an interesting migration. The effects of COVID are still with us. Uh, people still would prefer to work from home. And you see a lot of these jobs are shifting from five days a week in the office to three days a week in the office and two days working from home. Because um, they found out after the COVID thing that you could actually do that. Now, what that does is that allows people to live any place they want. And so when that happens, you'll see more migration, once again, from pricier, primarily blue states to less expensive red states, although they won't be less expensive for long because everyone's going to be flooding in there with money. So anyway, that's uh, news you can use. We will, as always, keep you guys up to date and apprised of what's going on. I wouldn't trust Zillow's uh, predictions as far as I can throw them. Um, I think you can basically wad those up and put them in the garbage can. I would I would stay with these other things and keep your eyes on the news cycle. I think that has the ability to make the biggest changes uh, in the housing market going forward this year. And I expect something will happen. All right. 